Alright, what is going on guys? To This is George here. Today we're going to walk you through how to put this image together. So if you watch the video where we shot it, you will see that everything was shot on a tripod, everything was shot with the same lighting, and I mocked everything up beforehand to ensure that when I put this together in Photoshop, it was gonna be a lot easier than had I not mocked it up ahead of time and then could have run into some problems with people overlapping and making more difficult cutouts for myself. This is what the finished image looks like. Uh, let's walk through how I got to this. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is open up one of the photos that I wanna use in the photo, the finished photo. So we're gonna start, we're just gonna go in the order they were shot. So this was the first good image of this section of the photo that I liked and that I wanna use. You can see I've already done my raw adjustments for this, which was quite easy. I ended up bringing up the shadows a little bit from how it was originally shot only because I like to start my photos with a little bit less contrast than I shoot them with. And then I like to add the contrast myself with, which you'll see in a second here. But so all we're gonna do is we're gonna open this image up and you can open it up as a smart object if you want as well. And in order to do that, down here you've got open image. If you hold down the shift key, it will change to open object. Now the reason you might want to do that is if you open it up as a smart object, when you double click that layer, it will reopen the photo in camera raw for you again, assuming you shot raw. I would highly recommend that you do shoot raw. But if you open it up as a smart object, you will then be able to make adjustments to the exposure in raw as if you were opening it up for the first time in RAW. And that can be quite handy when you're dealing with these sort of composites because we're gonna open them all up with the exact same settings, which I'll show you in a second, and that should be fine because nothing's changed. I haven't changed my ISO, I haven't changed my aperture, I haven't changed my shutter speed, I haven't changed the power on my lights. All I've done is slide my lights around within the image. So opening everything up, with the exact same camera raw adjustments should be totally fine. I'm going to do just that because I've already done this photo. I know that it works, but that is a handy thing to know. If you just hit down shift and then click that, it will open it up as a smart object, which will allow you to make adjustments to the raw processing of each layer in case they don't quite match. So we're going to open this one up. And you can see it's opened up here. We've got a really nice photo. It's a little bit crooked, which I don't know how I do that because I have an electronic level in the camera and I still manage to take crooked photos all the time, but that's okay. So we've got this photo. This is the first section. And I'm telling you guys, if you've done this all correctly and you've shot on a tripod and you've done everything correct, this is the easiest editing of a composite you will ever see and it's going to be quick and it's going to be awesome so we've got the first bit all we're going to do now is we're going to go over to my folder i'll bring it over here and we're going to open up the second image from the shoot that i want to place on here and that's going to be this one now it's already got my adjustments because i've i've opened this up previously but if this was the first time you were doing it You've opened up your first one. You've gotten the camera raw adjustments how you want them. All you would do is go to this little hamburger menu here, click on that, and you would use previous conversion. And it's going to give you the exact settings that you opened up your last photo with onto this one. And that will ensure that it's exactly the same as the previous one. So we're just going to open that up. It's on its own little tab in Photoshop. That's fine. Now we're going to open up the third and final image for this. And the exact same thing. We go up to the hamburger menu. We hit previous conversion. Boom. Open. We know it's going to be exactly the same as the other ones. So these are our three separate elements. We've got that one, that one, and that one. 
Now the decision is pretty well made for me, but under normal circumstances, I'd need to look at these and decide which one is going to be the bulk of the image. And what I mean by that is which one of these are we gonna see the most of, and then we're gonna slow pretty much put everything else into it. Because I've got light stands in this photo and I've got a light stand in this photo, it's pretty obvious that it's gonna be this photo. This photo doesn't have light stand in it. The only thing it's got different are the people and then some things that have moved around on the ground, but that's, that's not important. You need to kind of make the decision which one's going to be the base of your photo. And this one is going to be the base of our photo. So what we're going to do then is we're going to leave this one up. We're going to go over to another one. <clears throat> we're going to hit V on our keyboard, or you can just click over here on the little compass arrow thing. Hitting V brings up the move tool. We're just going to click on this image and drag it up into the tab and then down and onto our photo. Then we're gonna hit Command or Control T to transform it, and we're just gonna place it onto the photo. Now we just need to mask out the parts we don't want, or in this case, mask in the parts that we don't want. So we're gonna create a layer mask, which you can do down here with the little, I guess it's a little camera icon. Click on that. We've got our foreground color to black, so we're gonna hit option and then the backspace key, and that's going to fill our layer mask with black, which means we don't see anything from that layer going through to the layer below it. We're gonna hit B to bring up our brush tool. You can go over here to do that as well. We're gonna make sure our brush is as soft as possible. So hardness is going to be zero, and you just want a nice round brush. We're gonna make sure our opacity is at 100%. You can do that on your keyboard by hitting zero. So opacity is at 100%. We're gonna hit X to make white our foreground color. And just, you guys aren't gonna believe exactly how easy this is because I've planned this out and I've made sure that nobody's overlapping all the spaces between people are good. I don't have to worry too much about this mask, so I'm just gonna start painting them in with white. So do do do. We bring this guy in. We bring that guy in, and we bring that guy in. And that is pretty much it, except we've forgotten his feet. So we just need to go down. We've got feet. We've got feet and another bag of flour, and we've got some more feet from him there. There's little things we need to touch up, and you might have noticed a couple of them straight away. Don't worry about that right now. Right now, we're just getting this roughly in. Most things shouldn't have moved too much, so there shouldn't be a lot of things, but we can see this bag of flour moved. I'm gonna keep both those bag of flop bags of flour, but we'll come to that in a second. So we've got this one. This, this scene is pretty much in. Now we need to go to our third one, which was this. Again, we're gonna hit V. We're gonna click on it, drag it up into that tab, then drag it back down, hit Command and T to transform it and place it in the center of our photo. We're gonna do the exact same thing we did before. So create a layer mask, fill it with black so we can't see anything in it. Bring up our brush tool by hitting B hitting X to make sure white's our foreground color, and we're gonna paint in these guys over here. So we've got this guy, and we've got that guy there. And his chair is moved, which makes sense because he was sitting in it. We have another bag of flour there. And we're gonna, we're gonna go on to this um, tablecloth because it's been lit by the light, and we also need to bring his feet in. And there's a little bit of flour down there. We're gonna to touch that up. We're probably gonna, that, that part is gonna take a little bit more finessing because it's very bright on the floor. And we're gonna to have to make some decisions in a second. Actually, let's make that decision now. If we were to just bring all of this floor in, is it too much? And the answer to that question is yes. So we're gonna leave the floor how it is. We're just gonna, bring that part back out so it's not in. 
So let's go to our middle guys first. So we did it really rough. From a distance, it probably looks great. Up close, we're probably going to see some things that will have changed. Because one of the things that happens when you do composites like this is unless everybody's on the exact, hey, I'm talking exact same focal plane, things in the background will move a little bit because of, I think it's called focus creep. Um, and I bet you with that painting that we can see behind the guy standing up, I, I can see it actually from a distance that we're going to have a little bit of that problem. So I'm going to grab our brush and we're going to zoom in onto these guys here. And yeah, you can see on the painting, we've got bits that aren't quite right. So, and then over here as well. So if we got rid of that, that fixed that. Cause we're on a white brush. We've just brought that one back in. If we bring this one back in, it's gonna be fine all the way around here until we get to our friend over here. And then you can see we've got a little bit of an issue here. So we're gonna bring that back in and that's scone. I think it's a scone at least. We're going to bring that out. We're going to leave this bit like that. We're going to cheat with that in a minute. But what we need to do is make sure that this is good around his arm. So we're going to do really rough. Make sure we get all of this in. All of this here. We're just making the brush size smaller by using the bracket keys. So we have fixed that. So I mean, the left, right bracket makes it bigger, left bracket makes it smaller, in case you're wondering how I'm doing that. All this looks really good. We're just going to make sure we've got no real feathering going on on his arm, because we do need to bring this in. And we can see his arms disappeared just a little bit here. So we're just going to bring that back in. And that takes care of that. We have a little issue here which we can fix by, we're gonna remove, now we're gonna paint with black here because we're gonna remove the layer mask here. Now we've gotta worry about how it looks on this guy's leg. So we're just gonna go there. And then we can, yeah, see we got this scone problem here. The scones moved. So we're just gonna do this for now. Later we're gonna come in, we might be able to do this a little bit. We're later we're going to come in, we're going to clone some stuff in and around here and fix that. We're not going to worry about that right now. So <clears throat> we fixed that creep. Now we need to fix this. This one's going to be a little bit, we're going to do the opposite of what we did on the other one because we want this background layer, if you remember right, to be virtually everything. So we had a bit of focus, focus creep on this middle layer. So we just need to get rid of this part of this layer and it going around his hair. He's got quite easy hair to do that with, so I'm not actually overly concerned by that. So we're gonna get rid of this. We'll get nice and close and then we'll zoom in and do it properly. Right, so let's zoom in here now. We're at what, like 500%. <laughs> But this is going to allow us to just go around his head. He's got, I couldn't have asked for easier hair for this, to be honest, because there's no real hair sticking out. And because he's going to be so small in the scene, even if I did a really rubbish job of that, I don't think he would know. So that looks pretty good. I thought I saw something. Yeah, there it is. So I must have gone all the way up there, but I've sorted that out. And now that guy looks pretty good. We made sure we did that. We fixed the focus creep on the painting on that side. And it's gonna go down. Now we've got this guy who's also in the scene, which means any doorways, as you can see here, this doorway's gotten a bit wrong. So we're gonna fix that. We're bringing it back into the scene. And that is taken care of. I don't think we quite got all his hair in yeah we didn't quite get all his hair in on that so we just fixed that so we've got that fixed nothing up here this is going to be on the other layer this part of the painting is more than likely going to be on the other layer as well so we just need to check now 
the one bit that usually gets forgotten is anything in between these, like we can see a little bit here. So we're gonna have to come in and fix this bit. Let's check the floor and the tablecloth going between these two guys. We got a little bit of an issue here with the leaves from this lettuce, which we just didn't quite bring them in all the way. What we might end up doing is using a combination of the two layers. So we're gonna switch. So what we've done here for this one, we brought this, this element of the leaves back in using a white brush. This is on the background layer. So we want this part to come through. So we're gonna shift to black brush and we're just gonna bring that in. And we shouldn't really be able to tell that that's actually the same. And what we'll do when we sort of finish up the photos, we'll go in here with a bit of a healing brush tool and get rid of some of the mirroring that's going on there. So we zoom out, tablecloth looks pretty all right obviously there's a little bit of an overlap in here and the way that we're gonna well actually that's looking all right if you hit two that's gonna bring your brush down to 20 percent and we're just gonna sort of feather this back in until they start to line up a little bit more and that looks about right yeah there you go now that I've done it, you'll be able to see it, but I'm telling you at first glance, you're not going to notice that. Everything on this side of the photo should be totally fine. We haven't touched anything on this. This was our starting point. It's everything from here this way we've added. And we've left the ceiling. Obviously, again, over here, we have to come back in. So let's go on that layer now. You can always see what you've done. If you hit the back... Um, Oh, what is that called? Backspace key. You can see your mask. Everything in red is the black mask, the bits that we're not showing. So you can see right there that that's why we've got this bit going on in the ceiling. So if we just grab our black brush and do that, that should take care of it. But we're on 20%, which is why it's not. So hit zero to bring it back up to 100%. And then you can see that is fixed. Now we have this painting. We do need to do something about the painting. Since the painting for the majority of this is in this frame, we're going to bring it in. So we're going to switch to a white brush and we're going to bring the painting in over here. That's the easy part. Over here, we're going to bring it in. And because it's creek, we're going to have to bring in, I don't know what that is, but we're going to have to bring that in as well. And then we're going to have to zoom in and we're going to have to bring the painting in. Oops, did I switch? I must have switched brushes here. We're going to bring the painting in down here, and then we have to go around his head a little bit. And that looks pretty good. Then we have this little bit here, which was a wire for that. I don't know. I don't know what that is but that's all fixed now. This is something on the painting, in case you guys are wondering. I don't know what this is, but it's something on the painting. And so, right, that's taken care of that. Let's have a look at any food items. So we've got a little bit of something going on with the, oh yeah, we've got this bit of the painting we need to sort out as well. Just go in there and do that. And then we've got, I don't know what, what I guess this is a cake box down here. Think that's what that is. And we'll just bring this back in there. Right. And then yeah, we don't want to really go too far over here. Well, it's actually looking okay. Because it's oh no, that's where we run into that. Okay, so let's undo that. What we're going to do here is switch back to our black brush so we don't let this part of the, the layer through. So this is going to be normal layer or the other layer and then that is the new layer. And then, oh, we must not have painted all the way through him. 
So we need white. Make sure he's all the way in. And you can always see that again by hitting the backspace key and you can see what's been brought in, what hasn't been brought in. Make sure his chair is fully in as well over there. Right. That is the only thing now, but I know that when I do this finished photo, I'm going to end up cropping this poll out. But what we can see on this poll, and you can see it back here on this speaker and on this sign. So let's bring this sign back all the way in. And we'll, we'll just bring this poll so that this, I guess that's a speaker behind them, is lined up and we don't have any weird focus creep. The poll, I'm going to crop out in the finished photo. It's going to be gone. So I'm not gonna worry about this. What I would do is I would switch back to black and I would line this up right on the pole to make sure that the pole wasn't showing through on this layer. But I'm gonna crop that out. So we're just gonna leave that. Then we gotta go down onto the floor. So we've got the flower bag, it looks fine. We've got the flower here, we've got a bit of lettuce. I thought I saw some, oh, it was on this layer. So on this layer, which was our middle layer, we've got where we've started taking away some of this bag. So we need to switch to black so we can not show that part coming through. And that's that's it. We've brought that bag back in. Everybody's feet under here look fine, and everything over on this side should be normal. So that is basically our image put together, and now it's just a matter of editing it. And that is really it. That's that's it. We'll have to go in and, and touch some things up. And some of you guys are probably watching this going, oh man, that looks a bit crap. Like this bit of lettuce. Yes, I know, but we're gonna we're gonna sort that out. And we're missing the corner of this container. We're gonna sort that out as well. You only really see those because look how tiny it is in the photo. You you would never notice that. But I'm a perfectionist, so we're gonna fix that. So we've got that we need to fix later. And then there was one other thing I wanted to fix. Oh yes, this area here, because this box is fine, um, but this part's not. And we're just gonna clone this bit of the tablecloth up onto here and then sort of taper it down and it'll be fine. But we're not gonna do that quite yet because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna edit. And once we start editing, like properly adding contrast and everything like that, some of those things are gonna vanish and disappear anyways because they're gonna fall into shadows or they're gonna fall into places where we just don't really notice them right now. So in there's loads of distractions in this picture as well that I would really like to get rid of and I will get rid of, but again, I'm gonna wait till after we edit so that then I can see what's still bothering me and what isn't bothering me. The first thing I'm gonna do though is straighten the photo. So we've got all the bits put together. Now let's edit. And like I said, the first thing I'm gonna do is straighten it. So I'm gonna make sure I click on this top layer and I'm gonna create a, what's called a stamp layer. And to do that, the keyboard shortcut for this is a little bit ridiculous, but it's Shift, Alt, Command, and E all at the same time. And what that does is it creates a new layer that is a combination of everything below it. So that's given it basically it's merged all the layers together and placed it on top of us, on top of all the other layers for us. And from there we can go into filter and lens correction and we're gonna just straighten this up. So the first thing I can tell is that the horizontal perspective needs to be adjusted a little bit. So I must not have been perfectly straight on with the guys when I shot it. So that is looking a lot better because then now we need to rotate it. Minus, I'm gonna take a guess at about 0.7. And that's about right, but the horizontal perspective is off. And we can see that because the top line here was dead straight, but the table was not. So the table is still slightly off. So we bring that to about, oh, let's see. Let's go minus 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and minus one. And that table looks good. The legs on the table look good. 
that all this line isn't quite straight and that's bothering me a little bit so let's bring that back and then I think it might need oops, might need a little bit of vertical and that will probably solve our problem too much too much that is almost right that is man it's a really tiny vertical adjustment I'm looking at the pole Okay, so it's minus one there. We've got a little bit of the top being distorted, and we're going to fix that another way. I've got the table straight. I've got the pole straight. So now what we're going to do is we're going to transform this layer. And when you hit Command and T to bring up your transform window, if you hit Control and click inside of it, we're going to go with Skew. And what that's going to allow me to do is pull this corner up just a bit to make those lines up there straight and because there's nothing of importance up here I can do that and I actually didn't do it enough because you can still see a little bit of that line up there so we're just gonna pull that up a little bit there and we're gonna check it now by hitting V and we can drag down a ruler a guideline you can see that's perfectly straight these lines in the ceiling they are all straight the table is straight Everything is now straight horizontally, vertically. This See, these leg tables aren't going to be straight, but we can see that bookcase in the background is straight. And we can see the pole is mostly straight, but it's perfectly straight right there. But we're going to get rid of that pole anyways. But I got to say, I don't crop, even though I know I'm going to crop this photo, and I knew I was going to crop this photo from the moment I took it, I won't crop until the end and that is mostly because I like to save a layered version of this and I crop when I'm done because you can't really undo cropping uh, I'm sure there's what you, you can unclick delete pixels and all that stuff with the crop tool but I just I just leave it as the last thing I do and that way I can save an uncropped version as well as a cropped version in case I want to go back and look at the uncropped one and I want to change the crop. But anyways, so we're not going to crop yet. So what we're going to do though, is we are going to start doing the contrast. I do contrast in a couple of different ways. The majority of the time I do a hue and saturation layer and then I change the blending mode to either multiply, overlay, or soft light. I'll be honest with you, I hardly ever use overlay. It's rare that I use overlay, but I have on occasion. Multiply, I would use on a much brighter photo than this. Um, I feel this photo is already a bit dark. Um, and I, I know that probably doesn't make sense. I'll show you because multiply is going to make it really dark. It's going to make everything really, 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 really dark. And actually, I kind of like that. Soft light is going to make it a bit better. It's, it's overdone, um, the contrast. So... But we're going to fix that. Soft light's definitely the way I'm going to go with this. Multiply, if I did that, I would then end up masking and painting a lot of this stuff back in to bring it, bring the lightness back out of the photo. But we're going to go with soft light. And because we do that, you can see things have gotten really oversaturated, especially reds. I mean, look at the red on his shirt from before and after. Everything is a bit too saturated now. So we're just going to click there. Always about minus 50, bring the saturation back down to a normal level. We're going to reduce the opacity on this layer. Actually, normally I would say 70, 75%. I think on this, because it's quite contrasty already, I think 50% is probably what I'm going to go at. You can see the differences here as I click. And this is for me to see if I like that. And I do, I do like 50%. But it's still a little bit too contrasty for me. So I like to then make a little bit more adjustment. What I do is I click on the channels tab over here. If you hold down command or control and click on the red channel, it's going to make a selection based upon the red layer, which is mostly your highlights. From there, I'll go back over to my layers tab. I will create a levels adjustment layer, and you will see that it's created a mask of that selection. While it's on that, we're going to invert that. So you can hit Command or Control I, and that will invert your mask. 
and now you can see we've got this gap on our histogram. I'm just going to drag this over to about there until it looks good. And basically what this has done is it's brightened up the shadows. It hasn't affected any of the highlights. And then just in case there's some weird coloring issues going on, I'm going to change that blending mode to luminosity. And what that's going to do is it's making sure that this levels adjustment layer is only affecting brightness. It isn't affecting any color. That's important because on some images, it will massively affect the color. If you just change that to luminosity, you won't have that issue. So we've brought up the shadows a little bit. Now we're going to dull down the highlights or at least even out the highlights a little bit. So we're going to do that exact same thing. We're going to go to channels hold down command or control, click the red channel. That's going to make a selection on the red layer. We're going to go back to layers. We're going to create a levels adjustment layer. This time we're not going to invert it because this time it is affecting just the highlights and not the shadows. I'm going to change the blending mode to luminosity and then we're just going to drag that down a little bit. It's a minor adjustment, but it just tones down some of our highlights and even evens things out a little bit better going to create one more levels adjustment just to make sure there's nothing that needs to be brightened up because sometimes when you do that it does bring down the overall tone of the photo and sometimes you might need to just bring it back up a little bit but it looks good there's no gap there we're going to click on the white dropper and then hold down alt just to make sure nothing's blown out nothing's blown out so it looks good we will delete that layer because that was just a sort of checking layer for us and we guys are literally just about done so now what I need to do, I've done my contrast. It's still not quite how I want it. So what we're gonna do before I do, like the next couple of things I do is I'm gonna sharpen it now. And the reason I'm gonna sharpen it now is because I'm going to do a darkening of the edges. And if you sharpen after you do that, you will sometimes end up with some banding issues. And I don't want the banding issues. So I'm going to sharpen it now. I have a little action that I've made that does my sharpening for me. It's pretty awesome. It will. It's really good for portraits, and that's why it's called portrait sharpening, um, in that it won't sharpen up blemishes and things of that nature. But it is pretty much the sharpening that I use all the time. You will be able to buy this action from the website bemoregeorge.co.uk if you want to in the future but it does a really good job. And on something like this, with the people being rather small in the photo, before I even zoom in and show you, because I always reduce this opacity down to at least 75%. With the people being this small, I'm gonna reduce that down to 50%, because I can tell you that it will be way over sharpened on subjects this small in the photo. And we're just gonna zoom in and have a look. So this is the image now sharpened up, and I'll show you before, after. You can see it's really subtle, but good. If I had left that at 100%, in my, uh, my opinion, that looks awful. So 50% is what we've got. So we've sharpened it up. <clears throat> now I'm going to darken up the edges, and for that I use Nick software, which is now owned by Google. It actually doesn't even say Nick anywhere on this anymore. Um, but it was Nick. It's now Google. Either way, they have dark and light and center in the color effects for, and it's awesome. It does such a good job. And if you don't have this, you go buy it. I think it's like 10 quid now. When I bought all this stuff, it was a hundred and something. Uh, but since Google bought it out, it's, I think it's 10 pounds And that for what these filters get is it. So what this is going to do is it's going to do exactly what it says. It's going to darken the edges and lighten the center. And you've got a little slider panel over here. You can click on this and then place the center of the photo, which is going to be right on. Well, technically, it's about right. Uh, it's somewhere right around this guy here. And then you can change the way that it darkens. So this one, number two, will follow the orientation of the photo and make more of an oval shape, whereas this one will just make a circle. This will follow the orientation. So even if it's portrait orientated, it will follow that orientation. It'll make an oval in that direction. So I'm going to click on that because I don't want to darken up the guys on the ends. I do want to darken up the top and the bottom and a little bit around there. 
So this is the before and this is the after. It looks okay. We need to make the center size a little bit bigger. And then check that again, before, after, looking okay. We're gonna darken down the edges now. And it always sets the default brighten of the center to 25%, which I use, I find to be a bit too much. So I'm gonna bring that down to about 10 in there. That looks a lot better. What this does is it's drawing your eye more into the photo because there's so much distracting stuff in this photo we want our eyes to be on the photo and that looks pretty good so we're going to click ok on that and now it's time to start getting rid of distractions so first things first is we're going to get rid of the obvious ones that i know we're not going to crop so in order to do that i'm going to create a new blank layer i'm going to grab my healing brush tool and make sure that this up here is set to current and below. Not current, because if you do current, it will do absolutely nothing. If you hit current and below, it will work brilliantly. And the reason why I do this on a new layer is because I like to do as much as possible non-destructively. And so this layer is going to be merely cloning stuff out. And that is ideal for if you need to go back and look at things in more detail, you can see, right, this layer, that's all it's doing. And you can get rid of it if you want without affecting anything else. So new layer, we've got it. We've got our healing brush tool. We're going to zoom in. The first thing I want to do is get rid of this. It's driving me nuts up there. So we're going to grab a selection from about here, bring it over here and just get rid of that. That was easy as anything. Right, so the second one I want to get rid of is this, which I think I think that's like a security camera. I'm not entirely sure, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to get rid of it. Right, that is gone. There's some weird thing on the wall here. Um, which we're also going to just get rid of. Right, that's gotten rid of those. We're going to get rid of this one over here, whatever this is. If you can't tell, I zoom like way in. I'm at 400% there, but it, it really makes you do good work. This ball, I would really like to get rid of. Um, but because of this light, it might be a little bit more tricky. Um... Let's see. Let's let's get let's see if we can get rid of it. So we're gonna start off in there, even though that's gonna bring some lightness out here. And that's okay. We're gonna see how good of a job it does. And actually, I did a pretty good job. We got this dark spot down here, which we're just gonna get rid of that. That should be fairly easy to get rid of just by sampling within some of the more darker areas. And actually that did a pretty good job. So that's gone. Not going to worry about those. Not going to worry about that. Yeah, we are going to get rid of whatever this is. Don't know what that is, but that is now gone. Uh, the little things up here, again, like I said before, I know I'm going to crop this photo, so I'm not going to get rid of those. And I don't really see too much else that I'd want to get rid of right now. I think I'm going to wait on some of this until we crop. Just to be sure, I'm going to get rid of this because I don't like whatever that is. Oh, see, then we got a little bit of a shadow, so let's get rid of that shadow. Repetition there, and then we've got a little bit of a shadow from an object that is no longer there. So let's get rid of that. To get rid of our repeating pattern that's happened, we'll just make another sample and get rid of that there and uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. yeah let's get rid of this oops let's get rid of this little string i know the string is going to be like obscenely tiny in the photo we're gonna get rid of it just because it is right that looks good this little white dot annoying me it is gone Okay, some of this stuff I'm not sure how far down I'm going to crop, so I'm not going to get rid of just yet. 
And I think that's looking pretty good. So that was our distracting items. Let's fix the, the lettuce. So we're going to create a new layer again. I'm going to do a separate layer purely for the lettuce. And all we need to do is just get rid of this looking obvious that it's, it's repeating. So we're just going to grab a little bit of the lettuce there. And we're just going to do a little bit of that. Let's grab another piece of the lettuce from here and do that. And that looks pretty good especially because it's so tiny in there, nobody's ever going to see. I see another distraction, and that is this highlight on this chair. We're gonna get rid of that. Okay, that is gone. Okay, that is looking pretty good. So let's fix the color. Again, I like to, I have actions for everything to help speed up my workflow. I give everything two more looks so I've already sharpened, and if, I'm going to run this one here. This is another action as part of my Be More George actions. And what this one does is it, I call it a cartoon look. Um, it's hard to explain. So let's zoom in, and I'll show you. So we're at 100%. Keep an eye on him here. We're going to run this action. I'm going to reduce this opacity down. It's, it's too much on its own. So what it's doing essentially is it's running noise filters twice and then it's gonna it's doing some things on an overlay high pass filter to sort of bring back some detail. Reduce that to 75 percent and what you can see it's done if you look before and after it's gotten rid of like texture not overly but it it makes things a little bit smoother while keeping some detail. And I always do that because I like the look of that. I don't do that all the time. I shouldn't say I always do that because I don't do it for shoots for magazines because they don't want that really. Um, so I do that and then I've got this gray color one, which I always run this as well. This is really simple. All it is is, is a, a, a stamp layer where I run a high pass filter and then I change the blending mode to color and I reduce the opacity. At 20%, I sometimes leave it there. A lot of times I'll bring it down to 10, but you can see before and after it just, it really reduces reds. So it, it gives everything a, a, just a little bit more of a gray tone, right? So everything's looking good. This pole is really bothering me because I didn't fix that. But like I said, I know I'm going to crop that. So let's do that now because it's going to drive me nuts otherwise. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get rid of this pole. Oh, and also I have set on here, if you go to the crop tool, you have different grids that you can put on there. I have it set to golden spiral right now, and then I can toggle through that by holding down shift and hitting O, and it will bring up different versions of the golden spiral. The golden spiral, this is a true golden spiral. This one is based upon a Fibonacci sequence. If you don't know what a Fibonacci sequence is, I recommend you Google it just because it's fascinating. Um, but ideally you want everything to sort of be going through this spiral. But it, it doesn't really matter for this because I kind of just know I want this to be a little bit different than it is. The table wasn't quite centered right and I'm gonna put this about there. We're definitely gonna bring this top down. Not quite sure how far down just yet and then we're gonna bring this up. It's a bit more panoramic uh that is looking pretty good so hit okay on that yeah and i'm much much happier with that crop i'm gonna get rid of this now because i really don't like it so let's go up here again i created a new layer i've got my clone stamp tool and <laughs> this is something with nick it's just when i zoom in it does that sometimes all right, so we're just gonna get rid. Let's start down here. Place this here. And get rid of that. Didn't do the greatest of jobs, and that is fine. And that's because it's on a joint. So I, because that other joint is actually further away, it's technically smaller in the photo. So we're just gonna grab some better reference points to sort of 
bring this back up to how it should look. That just gave us a sort of base to start our clone from and make it look decent. Get rid of this little spot so I don't have any so I don't have any repetition because I will have a bit of repetition. Right, and then we can bring this over and just bring that there, like so. It's just a little weird kick in the thing here. All right. All right, so we got rid of that. That one I'm going to leave. Let's zoom out a little bit, have a broader look at it. This little spot over here is a bit annoying. And we're just going to get rid of it. It's in black, so I'm just going to grab an area of black and get rid of it. And I think that's it. I think that's pretty good. I'm... Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, as you can see, guys, the vast majority of editing of this photo was me just editing as I normally would. The actual putting together of the composite, what did that take? Five minutes? Because we shot everything on a tripod and because everything was lit the same, we didn't change any of our camera settings. It's really, really, really easy. And I, I mean, go out, try it, try it with a shoot. Doing things like this will give you unlimited possibilities of things that you can shoot. I mean, if I tried to shoot this all at the same time, we would have been there for hours trying to get everybody perfect in every one of these situations. So I shot it in three elements, and now I've got a perfect photo of them at least. But anyways, uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Have fun. Be awesome. Take lots of photos.